Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Baron and it has been ages since I played this game. Um, but yeah, I repaired my computer, I have a new CPU fan and while the box was open I also Done. doubled the RAM and I'm back in business. Done. So this is, if I'm not totally wrong, the smoldering corpse bar, but I think we talked to everybody in here. So let's get out. Oh yeah, that was quick save. Okay, who are you? Angry hive dweller. Harlot. Thug. Drunk. Amaris. Am Amaris. Done. Let's talk to you. Wait, hold it. Okay. Did I explore everything here? No, I didn't. That is the warehouse. World map. Our alley of dangerous angles. I think we have to go there and kill somebody. Helps have taken to revenge. I ran into a strange woman's self tie by the Dustman Memorial outside the mortuary. She was mourning the death of her three, three sisters who had been attacked by a group of chaos men called the Starved Dogs Barking. She asked me to kill three of their number to avenge the death of her sisters and I agreed. She said her sisters were attacked a few blocks directly south of the mortuary. I should probably find these Starved Dogs there. I think that was there. Okay, let's talk to Amaris. You see a young woman dressed in a tight leather bodice and leggings. She smells faintly of cheap perfume and her face, though pretty, is painted with garlish makeup. She smiles coyly as she sees you. Seeking some company, love. Oh wait, she's a harlot too? I have some questions. Sorry, love. I don't stand here to answer the questions a passerby. Sure you would like a little company, hmm? No, farewell. Okay, this is another harlot, harlot. Angry Hive Dweller. Done. What is down here, I wonder? All right. Oh, that is the, actually a, the roof of a building. A collector. What do you collect? Excuse me? Hive Thug? Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. All right. I don't know why you attacked me, but hey, whatever. All right. What about you? This man is draped in filthy, tattered brown robes, a long hood concealing most of his face from view. Greetings. You see his eyes narrow beneath his hood and he takes a step back. What do you want? What are you doing? I'm looking for some damned bodies is what I'm trying to do, but you think the dead powers have packed up their kip and left the planes, the way people are staying healthy and all. There's a sudden gleam in his eye. We had a pox last month and it was a glorious time it was. Bodies stinking to the high heavens and plenty of jig to be had too. Why are you looking for bodies? He looks surprised. Well, you all oblige us to the mortuary. There you talk to the dusties, haggle a little and get a few bits of jink. Why do the dustmen buy the bodies? They gather all the dead, it's their job. They pay us to cover more area than and bring any bodies we find to them. Then they make sure that the blighter's body goes to its proper place and gets cremated. Uh, they're all serious about it. They are balmy philosophy, but it's just more drink for me. Okay. I'm looking for a man named Ferret. Look around you, Cutter. I don't make enough jink to go lighten up the dark for nothing. I'll take a bit of coin, it will it will take a bit of coin if you want the chant. Okay. Give him a couple of coins. Okay. Give him ten coppers. Okay. Farad, what about him? You seem suddenly very. Why? Farad, hmm, he spits sneering contemptuously. Rack picker square is share graves. Me boss, <coughs> me boss's territory, you see. Ferret and his dogs came in a while back and tried to oust us. We fought them off. We did, so they're all in hiding somewhere now. We still catch one of his lads now and then around the square. Usually we turn them into a quick spot, a jink at the mortuary. The pink and sorts. 
Tell me about Sharegrave. He's my boss. Casts his shadow over a whole mass of collectors, he does. I'd stay away from him unless you got right good cause to talk to the man. I've never spoken with him personally myself. Uh, do you know where Ferret is? I know where the red bastard isn't. He ain't where most of the collectors call Kip uh, in Red Picker Square, but that he's close by, there's some worse the chant. Do all the collectors share your opinion of Ferret? Oh, we already had that, thank you. I guess I just wasted 10 coppers. How much money do I have, anyways? Um, where does it show? 186, okay. Moving on. Well, I'm not to I'm talking to you. Oh, get out! So, got seven covers back. Um, another harlot? Hey, barking, uh, barking dog. This wild-eyed man is hunched over, barking and howling at the top of his lungs. Beneath his thick, matted hair, you can make out a series of strange tattoos. They run the range from screaming faces to bizarre geometric shapes to what appear to be lines of verse. He's almost naked, doesn't look like it, but the dirt and filth covering him gives him the semblance of modesty. Greetings. The man whirls on you and gives a long growl. He draws out the growl for a few seconds and starts barking violently at you. In the distance you can hear answering barks. We should kill three of you, my friends. I said greetings. I'm not gonna snarl at him. I'm not no dog. I'm no animal. Uh, the man's barking ends with a snarl and he leaps at you. If this is how you want to die, wolfman. You dead? Yes. So, um, we got one. We should kill uh, three. Done. Another harlot. Another harlot. What is that here? Fels tattoo parlor. Hmm. All right. Can I go here? No, can't. Let's go to the tattoo parlor then. Uh, let's save before we do anything stupid. Can I check what's behind there? Human skin has been stretched across these wooden frames. The skins are covered with tattoos. That can't be human skin. Come on, give me I'm a gone. break. What human has that much skin? I'm gone. Must have been a giant. I'm not really sure I like that, what I see here. Do I have to kill somebody? Done. I mean, if those people died of natural causes, then it would be okay. Fell. You see a Darbus, but something about it strikes you as odd. It has the same shock of white hair, the same greenish cast to its skin, the same pair of goat horns. Really? Where? Then you suddenly realize this one is walking on the ground, not floating. For some reason that makes you uneasy. I had some questions for you. The Darbus waits. Who are you? As you are about to speak, you suddenly realize you already know the Darbus's name. His name is Fel. As if in response, the Darbus inclines his head slightly and a lone symbol appears above his, its head. It is a, it's blurry at first, then resolves into a white oval with a black lightning bolt through it. I feel like I know you, Fel. Fel bows reverently, reverently and a stream of symbols swirl about his head, 
rotating clockwise than counterclockwise. It takes you a moment to translate. This is the first time and not the first time you have come to this place. Do you know who I am? Another series of symbols materializes quickly and sharply into focus above Fell's head. The translation comes to you just as quickly and sharply as the symbols themselves and as if you have translated the exact same string many times before. Yes, but I'm not permitted to tell your story. Why not? Updated my journal. For a moment there is no response from Fell, then a stream of rebuses appear as if trickling out of Fell's mind. My apologies, I cannot. I cannot change the nature of a man. Oh, the nature of a man. You can't explain why, but the last sentence sends a crawling sensation through your skull. Nature of man? What does that mean? The symbols that appear above fell almost mirror the previous tree. My apologies, I cannot say. Okay, what else can you say? What is this place? A slow train of symbols materialize around Fell's head. The symbols take several moments to resolve, starting with simple lines, then fleshing themselves out into breathtaking colors. This is where I tattoo color and life upon flesh and bone. Um, can I see what tattoos you have? Would you sell stuff? Uh, buy stuff? No, you wouldn't. I have lots of uh, jewelry that I need to sell. Somebody, well, well, you could buy tattoos here. Yeah, I'm not gonna buy anything right now. By the way, uh, it's far too rich for my blood, anyways. You could identify stuff, you don't need to identify anything. Um, could I be talk to you? Could they can translate for us? Um, can you tell me anything about these tattoos on my body? Fell studies your body for a moment walking around you. He mirrors each symbol as he examines it, then returns to face you. I know them. None are by my hand. What did he say? He says the tattoos are not his. Hey, that's great. Since I understand it as well, I can see whether they are truthful. Oh, that's cool. Morty, can you translate for me? I'd sooner be strained through Atanari's bowls than unravel what these floating godheads are trying to say. You want a translator? You're not a dacon. Get holier than thou and twice as silent to translate. <laughs> Maybe I will. Okay. Ask him what this place is. This is where I tattoo color and life upon flesh and bone. He places pictures on flesh here. Tattoos. Cool. Um, I feel like I know you. He has split his speech with a contradiction. The count pauses for a moment, his black eyes swimming across the symbols. He says it is the first time you have come to him. He says it is not the first time you have come to him. Does he know who I am? Uh, you are known to him, but he cannot tell you what you want to know. Why not? In a pla in place of an answer, he surrenders an apology for his silence. Deacon pauses for a moment, and he speaks again. His words are like ice. He says that he cannot change the nature of a man. As Deacon repeats these words, you feel a terrible pressure in your head. That fades with the last word. So it looks like Deacon is truthful. What are those frames in the back room, Fell? A curve and train of symbols slowly materialize around Fell one by one. It is my gallery. You, your discarded skins are my canvas. I admire you. I am saddened for you. This is his gallery. He says that he knows you as his canvas. He shows respect for your strength with his admir admiration. The corn is silent for a moment, but then he insults you by giving you his pity. His pity? Uh, another caravan of symbols forms around Fell, this time forming a circle. The mark of torment lies upon your flesh. Tragedies and loss have built themselves upon it like stones upon a foundation. You have endured great pain. He pities you for the scars torment has left upon you. He says you have endured. In enduring you have grown strong. What does he mean? 
A long string of rebuses appears above Fell's head and surrounds his arms like manacles. I admire you because you have never surrendered to the weight of these losses, despite the fact that chains hang on you still. He says his admiration is known through your enduring of loss. He says loss hangs upon you like chains, yet you stand and walk. Ask him to go on. These losses blanket his this life and all of your past ones. You shed lives like a molting serpent. You are exploring the infinite paths of life. He says loss covers this life and all the ones that have come before. He says you molt like a serpent, leaving these lives behind you as you walk all the life's path. Does he say anything else? Take with you this warning. Each of your lives casts a shadow on existence. You must travel to a place where these shadows have gone mad and regrets have scarred the earth. He would have you know this warning. Each of your lives casts a shadow on existence. Your path will take you to a place where the shadows do not know themselves and the walls are made of regrets. Uh... Okay, he apparently doesn't say anything. Do you feel complete? He asks if you know yourself to be complete. I I don't. In fact, ever since I woke up in the mortuary, I feel like something's missing. Something inside. Fell nods at the seas of symbols materialize in a halo around him. You are strong. Keep faith and you shall become whole again. He, he pays respect to your strength again. He tells you to keep faith, then you shall know yourself again. Okay. He mentioned that he met me before. Does he know how I died? Shadows, okay. Shadows? The three symbols swear about each other, each leaving a faint black, misty trail about them. They take on a ragged edge, like teeth and talons, and multiply. Where, where they were three, there is nine. Nine becomes twenty-seven, until the room is a swarm of shadows. Many shadows. They streamed from the darkness, swarmed you, then left you to die. Okay. He says many shadows came for you, the reason for taking your life is not known to him. Okay, that's pretty much it. And here we could take a look at his tattoos again. But I don't have enough money to buy that now. A burning skull has been inscribed on this wall, two symbols of duality. Blanket. So, but the good news is the coin actually is truthful. He doesn't lie to us. Good to know. Done. So, let's take a look. Who are you? Another thug and a harlot. What is that here? Tenement of thugs. We want to go in there? Probably not, eh? These barrels are probably here to catch rainwater. The only thing that fills them is I'm dust. Gone. Oh, let's go in there. Take a look. What you first took to be a door in this archway is actually a painting. The artist has made use of the shadows of the overhanging arch and some subtle texture effects to give the door the illusion of substance. Well, examine the door. Other than the skill of the artist, there's nothing remarkable about the painting. The door has been painted on a rough stone wall. You can feel the stone and mortar beneath the painted wooden texture. Okay, leave the door alone. I don't believe that. Uh, but there's nothing we can do about it right now. I'm gone. So, there's another harlot here. Whoa, what's going on here? Hive dweller, harlot. You have a uh, hive tout. It's probably the same. I'm gone. 
I'm gone. Looks like I got everything. Come on, show me what you are. A harlot. Hey, what's going on here? Why do you not show me what you are? Another stuffed bar uh, barky is a uh, blah stuffed barking dog. Mounts for trees. You see a tired looking sorrowful old man who is gazing at the edge dead tree in front of him. He is mumbling to himself and tapping his chin as if trying to figure something out. Occasionally he shakes his head sadly. Greetings. He seems momentarily startled as you interrupt his train of thought. He speaks in a calm, unhurried tone, but one full of sadness. Oh, greetings to you too, friend. How how's this day find you? Well, I guess it finds me miserable. He seems to become even more downhearted. That's too bad, friend. Sorry to hear that. Hope your fortune improves. He seems about to turn back to the tree. And how's this day find you? He shrugs slightly and Profs a bit of a smile. Fortune finds me well, though I'm sad and just the same. How's that? He pets the tree beside him. It's the trees here in the hive. They're dying, friend, and no one cares. Seeing the look on your face, he holds his hand up as if to silence you for a moment. It may not matter to someone, but it's important to me. I feel it is a shame to see the last tatters of life and beauty in this ward left uncared for to die. Can you understand it, friend? Yes, you're right, it's a sad thing. He seems surprised and blurts out. Really? Oh, I mean wonderful. Perhaps he would... He pauses and seems suddenly suspicious. He recomposes himself, speaking in his usual slow manner. In any case, that's good. I suppose you have some questions for me now? No, no, not just yet. What is it you were going to ask? For the first time, the man seems genuinely happy. Beaming he, beaming, he explains, it's difficult for anything to survive here. Just look around and you'll see what I mean, friend. I'm not sure if it's possible for the trees to thrive here, even if they somehow were to get enough light and clean water. Go on. He nods enthusi enthusiastically. But if enough people care, really want them to live, I just know they'll survive. They'll turn green again and flourish. Hmm... What? That makes no sense. He smiles knowingly, shaking his head. You're new here. I can't see that now. You don't understand how things work in Sigil, friend. Believe is everything here. Everything. Mm, you could be right. I am right. I'm certain of it. A sense of conviction surrounds him like an aura. He seems so unlike the man you first spoke to. That's all I'd ask of you, friend. Just care for them and hope for their recovery. In time, should enough people want it, it will come to pass. Can you do that for me, my friend? Yes, I'll help you. Excellent, my friend, excellent. I thank you. You've given me back my confidence, my purpose. Perhaps I can find others like you who will listen. Perhaps we will make a difference. What about your companions, friend? Would you speak to them on my behalf? Morta, what do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, Chief, sure, whatever you say. I'm serious, Morty. Can you make the effort? Morty looks at you for a while, silently, then nods. Yeah, I can. If that's important to you, I'll do it. Thanks. Darkon, could you help this man? One finds your request most intriguing. Trees and hive? Like cities in limbo. They would stand as a testament to the will of the people not to bow to that which would surround and devour them, to take what has been thrust upon them or left behind and make good of it. I too will care for these trees. Thanks, I had some questions. Any change in the trees yet? 
Uh, yes, friend. There has been. It's so slight, you can barely see it. But look, fresh sap from the trunk and a handful of new buds. It's only a matter of time now. I thank you again for giving me hope and hope once more. Okay, who are you? I'm called Morns for Trees by the people here. Why are all the trees dying? Just look at the surroundings, friend. Can you imagine anything having an easy life here? And besides the wretched conditions, the robbers rarely come to this part of the si of Sigil. Darbus? You know, Darbus, surely you've seen them. They are the ladies' servants. They care for the city. Some parts of it more than others, of course. He looks sadly at the tree behind, beside him. The lady? The lady of pain, my friend? The mistress of Sigil? He stops speaking suddenly, making a semicircular sign of his chest. He leans close to whisper, it does no one good to speak of the lady. No, only that she alone controls the city, whether it appears that way at times or not, and speak of her no more. Very well. Why don't the Darbus come here often? The hive's a dangerous place, but that's not it. The Darbus have the lady watching over them and no one's foolish enough to tangle with her friend. I suppose it's really all on account of Fell. Who's Fell? Fell he's ah well friend. I just say he's the only Darbus that doesn't serve the lady. I don't know the whole dark of it, as as they say, but he's shunned by his fellows and lives here alone in the hive. He runs a tattoo parlor, but most of the sigil is wary of the place. Tell me about his tattoo parlor. Fell's parlor is only a few buildings east of here. It is marked with his personal symbol, a white oval pierced by a lightning bolt. I've never been there myself, friend, but as I understand it, he's able to turn images from his speech and, you know, double speak and in images, right, Rebuses? Yes, go on. He nods. So he's somehow able to turn images from his speech into tattoos, and not just ordinary inkings either. I'm told there's magic about them and more than just in their making. I don't know much else about it, though. So what about this place is there to be wary of? Well, friend, since he turned from the lady, many people think it's just a matter of time before her shadow falls upon him. No one wants to be about when and if that happens, I'm sure. Uh, you don't have any idea how he came to be shunned? Like I said, friend, I'm not too sure. I, uh, I've only heard vague rumors about him and being on the wrong side of the issue when some power decided to but heads with the lady. You could always try and ask him, friend. I'm told he's friendly enough, if not a little odd. Some power? A deity, friend? A god? Normally the lady has no problems with the likes of them, as she keeps their lot out of sigil entirely. His name was Oscar, but I don't know much else about the affair. His name was? Yeah, he's probably dead. The man nods gravely. As I understand it, the lady destroyed him. I wouldn't forget it if you were to ever consider messing about with her or her servants. Okay, what else do you have? What can you tell me about this place? This is the worst stitch in over, friend. Not much else to say about it, he smiled sadly. What if I was looking for work? In the hive? Unless you're a thief, I doubt you'll find any. You could always gather corpses and hold them to the mortuary gates if you are that desperate. I hear the dustmen pay a pittance for them there and in an, effort to, in an effort to keep the hive streets and alleyways from becoming even more foul. Where would I go to enjoy myself? Well, friend, it takes a certain sort to find anything of amusement in a place like this. I'd look for entertainment in another ward if I were you, safer. What's dangerous? Here? Everything, friend, everything. Well, maybe not me. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm looking for a man named Farod. Sorry, friend, when I first came, first came here, I spoke to many people, but I don't remember anyone by that name. Now, why would I bother him about my journal? Oh. Okay. Um... I think that's all we can do here. I, I, I've heard that there's a way to make him stop worrying, but I don't really know how to get that. 
This ash covered tree looks like it has suffered greatly since being transplanted here. Alright. Maybe if the trees get better, maybe then I can, can come back. An angry hive dweller. Greetings. Okay, leave him in peace. Alright. So that's pretty much it, right? There's no other exit grid, apparently. But except this one. What is here? Another thug. Done. What is that? Hey, who are you? Barrier. Much as this creature's body is a combination of man and ram, his head is a mix of sorts, with a broad flat nose, goat ears and a pair of curling horns. Intricate designs are shaved into his dirty pelt, and a massive four-flanked polearm hangs from his belt harness. He doesn't seem to notice you. Greetings. He turns to face you with starting speed. His eyes dark and suspicious of you. His voice is deep and rumbling, not quite human and heavily accented. What do you want, to Alex? His hand is close to his pole arm. Only to speak with you. I had some questions. He seems to calm down. His hand drops away from his weapon. He still keeps a certain distance from you, however. What do you wish to ask me? Why were you so wary of me? He seems sad for a moment. This place, a wretched, unclean place, is full of unfriendly, sometimes desperate people. Not the best er place for a visiting Barry or two legs, he shrugs. I have business here, though. And so here I am. Visiting? You do not live here. The burrier shakes his head, laughing. No, no, two legs. No burrier could live in this. Live like this. Could live this? Sis? I don't understand that. Where are you from? From the plains of Uskar, two legs. They are my home. He smiles in f a fond recollection as if warmed by the memory. What sort of business were you here for? Another time, two legs. If we ever met in a happier place, I shall tell you about it. Okay. Tell me about the city. He is silent for a moment, as if waiting for something more from you. Ah, what about the city? What is this place? Why, it is a crossroads, two legs. Surely you know what... Know that all paths run through Sigil. You mean paths? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said, pass. Okay, I understand. Where is Sigil exactly? Where? Hmm, he looks up thoughtfully, tugging at his goat beard. It is in the outlands, the center of the plains. But since you can reach it from just anywhere, Sigil is in more places than just that, you see? I think so, yes. What is this place, though? Okay, we already had that. I'm not gonna annoy him. I know he has an accent, so why should I annoy him? He's barely human at all. Tell me about the slums around us. Um, I'm looking for a place to enjoy myself in the slum. Yeah, yeah, the good stuff. I don't think there's anything to enjoy here, two legs. Perhaps you should look elsewhere in another ward. If I were looking for war work, I doubt there's any honest work around here. The only thing in ample supply in the hive is trouble. Okay. Can you tell me about the Lady of Pain? He looks at you curiously. What is it that you wish? Oh wait, I actually pressed the wrong number here. Boom. Lady of Pain would be four. The lady he looks around as if to see if anyone overheard. I only know that she rules this place, all of Sigil, and that the locals feel it bad luck to speak of her. Okay. Do you know someone named Farad? I know a few people here, two legs. This Farad is not one of them. A friend of yours? I don't know, really. Let me ask you something else. Uh, yeah, of course he doesn't know anything about the uh, journal. Okay, that's pretty much it. 
Oh fuck off, really? Endure. What's up? An enduring grow strong. Damn it. Let's fuck them up. Damn it. Did you see that? Yeah, the target is gone. Get a new one. Goodbye. Damn it. Thanks, that was fun. Done. All right. Let's do some looting. Done. 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 Okay, inventory is rather crowded now. I have nice spells, but I'm not a mage. Alrighty. Who are you? Angry Hive Dweller. Done. Can we go in here? No, we can't. Okay, so how about we call it a video? And continue in the next one. So, thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye!